here, it's all about metal in all shapes and sizes, in seemingly unending stages of development. It's pounded, it's dipped, it's milled. And when this high-tech tinker toy is put together, you get a rocket launch. Three, two, one, main engine start, zero, and lift off. While the nation's space shuttle program is over, the rocket business is, well, taking off. The number of companies working on rockets and spacecraft seems to grow daily. There is a bit of a feeding frenzy to reach the new frontier. I do think that in the next couple of years we'll see some of these smaller players probably start to peter out as, as either their objectives don't line up with those of NASA or funding streams dry up or simply technological problems. United Launch Alliance is the big boy on the block, top of the rocket food chain. On the floor of their plant in Decatur, Alabama, at any one time, there are 20 different Delta or Atlas rockets in the pipeline that will eventually carry satellites and spacecraft. They start taking shape from a nondescript 10,000-pound sheet of metal, down to 1,100 pounds when the milling process is done. What you're looking at here are segments of the second stage of an Atlas V rocket, stainless steel segments. How thick are they? They're less than the thickness of this dime. This is not some new high-tech rocketry. It's been around a while, a long while. And this thin-walled stainless steel technology. That's, that's this stuff here we're this, looking at. This thin little stuff. This is the technology that put John Glenn into orbit. What's changed? Manufacturing processes have dramatically improved. Engineer Amy Pace oversees processing a dream job. You know, not everybody can wake up and their job is to go build, test, and launch rockets. But more people are lately, a sign of a healthy industry. ULA has added 200 employees in two years, most good-paying high-tech jobs that have boosted the economies of both Decatur and nearby Huntsville. Just the wages uh, bring in economic stimulus to the area, but then you talk about the suppliers that they bring in and the number of jobs, you know, it's in the millions and millions of dollars. Spin-offs are part of the story, too. Metal is coated with an anti-corrosive material. Years back, they needed something to recoat areas where joint welding removed the coating. One formula after another was tried until on what was called the 40th water displacement test, they found something that worked. And thus was born... To this day, you use WD-40 on these That's welds. That's it. That's WD-40. Right That's WD-40? Yes. Oh, look at that. You may never look at the business of rockets quite the same again.